Let's use the four-step process to solve this one. So let's start with state. We want to find the probability that most of the students in the sample want a new mascot. That is, we want to find the probability that p hat, our sample proportion, is greater than 0.5. Now we need a plan. The sampling distribution of p hat, when the sample size is 40 and the true parameter is 0.38, has some specific characteristics. First, we know the shape of this distribution is approximately normal. This is because n times p is greater than 10 and n times q, which is the complement of p, is also greater than 10. This is good news because we can use normal calculations. We also know the center of the p hats is going to be at p, the true parameter value, 0.38. If we assume the school has at least 400 students, the 10% condition is satisfied, and we can calculate the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of p hat. We're going to store this value as x by pushing the STO and X button. Now we're ready to actually do our probability calculation. We're trying to find the probability that p hat is greater than 0.5. Now since we're allowed to do normal calculations, let's start by drawing a normal curve. The center of the curve is 0.38, the true parameter value. And what we need to do is figure out where 0.5 would be. To do this, we'll calculate the z-score. Our z-score is 1.56, so 0.5 is 1.56 standard deviations above the mean. That's about right here. Let's shade everything greater than that. The shaded area under the curve is equivalent to the probability we're trying to find. Now, using normal CDF, the normal cumulative density function on our calculator, we can calculate the area. Our lower limit is 0.5. Our upper limit is positive infinity, so we'll just put a large number here. Our mean is 0.38, and we stored our standard deviation as x, so we can just type x here. This gives us a probability of about 0 0.05896. So the probability the majority of our sample wants a new mascot is about 0 0.0586. But all of this was using the normal approximation to calculate this. It really follows a binomial setting. You can check this by using the acronym BINS. It's binary because students can say yes or no they want a new mascot. It's independent because we already checked the 10% condition. There's a fixed number of trials because our sample size is fixed at 40. And the probability that any one of those people in the sample says yes is our parameter value, 0.38. So the actual distribution isn't normal. It's discrete and looks like this. So for all 40 to say they want a new mascot is an extremely low probability. It's much more likely to have about 15 people say they want a new mascot. So in a sample of 40, for the majority to want a new mascot, we need 21, 22, 23, 24, really anything 21 or higher. So that's all these probabilities right here. So the actual probability that the majority of the sample wants a new mascot is the sum of these areas right here. When we use the normal approximation, we used a curve that looks like this. Now this curve fits pretty well, but it's slightly different than the actual distribution. Our normal curve gave us all of this area, which the discrete binomial distribution below it doesn't match perfectly. So to figure out what the actual answer is, we can use binome CDF on our calculator, the binomial cumulative density function. If you press second and then vars and go to the very bottom, you'll find binome CDF. So the number of trials is 40 because we asked 40 people. The probability is 0.38, because that's the probability that each individual wants a new mascot. And for x value, we're going to put 20. Binome CDF is going to tell us the cumulative probability of 20 or less people saying they want a new mascot. So that's all these bars right over here. With this calculator, we can't directly calculate these bars on the right. But it's okay. If this is the probability that 20 or less want a new mascot, 
the probability that more than 20 want a new mascot is just 1 minus what we found. So the actual answer is approximately 0 0.04376. Now on the AP exam, which of these should you use? They'll actually give you credit for either. Just make sure you check the conditions. Like this video? Check out my book, The Ultimate AP Statistics Practice Book. It's got 100 problems, all with videos just like this. You can pick it up on Amazon.com.